Dr. Gassman wrote Swept Under the Rug in response to her own prior work in which she unintentionally omitted information about the plight of African American women in the arena of post-Civil War education in America. I believe she cannot be accused of any wrongdoing in her post past publication, uh, publications, and conversely should be applauded for her self-motivated effort to right her own wrongs. In Swept Under the Rug, Gassman purposefully goes to great lengths to include as much information as she could find about African American women in the history of American education. Gassman's compilation of the facts in this publication, in and of itself, accomplishes her broader goal of simply rep uh, reporting the little-known facts about African -America, American women's education. But she does not stop there. Gassman provides a glimpse into the why of the matter. She asks, why is this the way it is? In short, there are many reasons as to why a broader study of African American women's uh, education does not exist prior to Gassman's article. First, it is important to look at African American education in the context of post-Civil War America. Following the war, the main goal of educational institutions was simply to include the newly freed, freed slaves into the system. This was a monumental task as it required, among other things, a lot of money. Successfully meeting this newfound educational need in America required the efforts of white philanthropists and skilled African-American men whom lobbied for funding for black schools. As a result of these truths, much of the research that has been done about this subject focused on the above-mentioned efforts to raise funds for the black schools. It is no surprise that research focused on these fundraising efforts as uh, as the result, or there is no surprise that this is the way it is, as the results were truly remarkable. Although since women were largely excluded from these efforts, they were also largely excluded from much scholarly analysis of education in that time period. Secondly, it is hard for scholars to analyze how education following the Civil War differed based on gender, as a majority of research that from that time was done to provide insight into whether or not educating former slaves would be effective in general. This topic was of the utmost importance at the time, as educating African Americans was a completely unprecedented American experiment. Overshadowed by the question of overall functionality, little attention was, was and has been paid by researchers into the unequal treatment of people based on their gender. In short, the goal of research was to determine if educating African Americans was working, and not how well it worked for everyone involved. That said, some information about the education of African American women does exist, and Gassman sheds light on much of it in her article. She mentions how the white Christian missionaries originally played a role in shaping the curriculum, uh, shaping the curriculum of black schools. This had large implications. For example, many white people of this time believed that black families revolved around a strong female, uh, around a strong female, much more so than white families. This may not be untrue, and it is not necessarily a negative suggestion by itself. What was unfairly placed upon African American women as a result of this assumption did, did have negative implications. Gassman describes how women were thus educated with the underlying goal of uplifting the black race, uh, an impossible task. Because of these uh, assumptions, African American women were seemingly held responsible for both educating themselves and using that education to both earn money in a, in a profession as well as to become moral police in their own communities. It should be noted that white women did not have near the responsibility of Afri African American women as they were expected to solely use their education to raise a well-informed family. The responsibility to earn money from an education was placed on the shoulders of white men. As a history teacher, I was surprised to learn for the first time from the man who ended Jim Crow video that we watched that Linda Brown, a woman, was at the center of the court case Brown versus the Board of Education. This surprised me as I read, uh, as I read uh, Gassman's article first, which stated that conversations about gender equality within African American communities is virtually taboo, taking a backseat to racial equality. After reading that passage, I naturally assumed that Brown, from the court case, naturally referred to a man. What does not surprise me is the reason why gender equality plays second fiddle to racial equality. It could be said that the African American community in America has been performing triage since the Civil War, tending to the issues most important to survival first before fixing other fraught problems faced by their community, gender equality being one of them. After thinking some more about what I learned from the video, I became embarrassed that I did not know that the defendant in Brown versus the Board of Education was a female. But then it dawned on me. That was one of the reasons you had us watch the video in conjunction with this reading. If it wasn't, please humor me. 
Regardless of your intent, my embarrassment in learning from the video provided me further evidence that African American women's issues in education are vastly underreported in educational textbooks and other educational publications. If a history teacher like me is not aware of these facts, then the average American uh, citizen surely does not know the true facts surrounding Brown versus the Board of Education. I can guarantee you I will never forget what I learned from this assignment.